So I'll have to go and do that again, but that's okay. Um, so as I was mentioning, you factor this out. As if you want to factor out a 3, that becomes a 1, right? And again, guys, factoring is really just dividing out that term. So if I want to rewrite this by factoring out, I've got to factor out a 1 half. And some of you are like, eh, I don't know how to factor. I can factor out the 3. 1 half, that makes it a little bit difficult. But again, think about this, guys. As factoring out the 1 half is kind of like dividing out the 1 half. If you're dividing out a 1 half, divide out a 1 half from both terms. What is 1 half x divided by 1 half x? Or 1 half x divided by 1 half? x. What is 2 divided by 1 half? Well, before you answer, dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. Or you can think about it like this, like 2 over 1 half multiplied by 2 over 1. 4. Mm, OK, but I'm not sure if I can do that on my own. Well, let's check. Your, let's check my work. Does 1 half, like here, see how that checks your answer? Does 1 half times s give you 1 half x? Yes. Does 1 half times 4 give you 2? Yes. yes. So we're good. So by, write, by taking our equation, when we have that b and the c, by writing it in form c, now we can see, oh, there's a horizontal stretch of 1 half, and you're going to shift the graph left 4. Right? So therefore, we could say that the domain is now negative 4 to infinity, and the range is 0 to infinity. Because all the, di all the graph di did was just get shifted to the left, right? Didn't get shifted up or down. So the range would be unchanged. All right? The other technique to at least be able to identify this is just to take whatever's inside of your function, in this case under the radical, what we essentially would call the bx minus c, and just set that equal to 0. Okay? So the initial parent function, we're going to say no transformations, we're going to be at 0. But whatever we do with bx minus c, that's going to like shift the graph left to right. So when you take whatever's inside the radical and set it equal to 0, that's going to tell you what your new transformation is. So I can subtract the 2 on both sides. I get 1 half x equals negative 2. And then to get rid of multiplying by 1 half, I'll multiply by the reciprocal. And I get x equals negative 4. So the confusing part on this, guys, this doesn't tell you, this isn't like the opposite. This tells you where your transformation goes. Like this tells you negative 4. So that tells you, oh, shift the graph 4 units to the left. I think it's kind of confusing because if you look at it this way, we're, we're using the opposite understanding under here, right? Where this is the literal understanding. So it's just kind of like, you know, different ways to do it. This technique is nice, especially if we get something complex under a radical. It's nice to be able to use this to like solve rather than sometimes factoring out terms can kind of get messy or like confusing. So it's just a little safeguard. I will prefer to use this method, but sometimes I'll revert to using this as well for instruction. Okay? Yes, no, maybe so. All right, and we got time for the last.